Harkening back to the classic days of Banjo-Kazooie, Jack and Daxter and Psychonauts, The Last Tinker's City of Colour is a bright and breezy adventure platformer that offers a pretty lightweight fable but wrapped in a vibrant and exciting world. Playing as Koru, you have the ability as a Tinker, which enables you to wield the power of different primary colours of the world, a power you only get after seeking out the three different spirits in the three districts of Colour City. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, after a brief tutorial about the controls and everything like that, you're shown how the world of Colour Town is slowly breaking apart due to prejudice and fear. This leads to something called the bleakness to invade and start draining the world of colour. And as you're a character all made up of colour, that means being drained of life. By travelling through the city, you have to unite everyone to fight back against the bleakness and recover the power of the elemental spirits. This then gives you the small array of combat moves and things like that. A red punch, for example, will inflict damage upon the bleakness enemies. Blue will make them freeze in fear, while green will make them run away. It's a fairly simplistic kind of stuff, but it's really easy to use and quite entertaining. Uh, the platforming, that's done automatically for you, which is either good or bad, depending on how much you really want to do that in a game like this. What I will say though is that it's done in a very kind of stylish Assassin's Creed way by just holding down the right trigger, Coral will then jump, swing or grind on rails leaving you just to determine which direction you want to go. It's nothing you know, approaching Mario 64 levels of platforming but it really doesn't have to be because just look at that art style! This is the Last Tinker's greatest feature uh, and as you can see the handcrafted style of the world and the characters that inhabit it gives it a, an adorable feel unlike most other games out there. Indeed, playing this game reminded me that on occasions video games can actually use the whole palette of colours nature gave us, and they can do it with such vibrancy that it makes you actually feel good inside. But this art style wouldn't mean very much unless you had some decent characters to go along with it. Fortunately, The Last Tinker has enough to keep you interested. Most of the town's folk of Colour Town are sort of slightly odd anthropomorphic cartoon creations of different sizes and colours. Yeah, you've got the reds who are nearly always angry and aggressive and they look pretty mean. The greens are always fearful and small, running away. Where the blue guys are all much larger, lumbering kind of creatures, but really kind of quite down and depressed. Does that sound like a little too cute? Well, yeah, it is a bit. And the game's story is way too predictable to really grab you in any you know deep way. Uh, yeah, there's moralising sort of st stuff within the game. It's really quite obvious, and it centres around people of different colours working together for a common goal. You know, it's blatant and a bit kumbaya-ish, but it's never really forced down your throat. And as the whole game is designed really around its art style and charm, it's you know it's no big deal really. But the best part of this game are the characters of Biggs and Bomber. These are the mushroom folk, and they are the key to many of the puzzles that you'll face in the game. As you can see, Bigsy's lumbering frame will help you activate bridges, distract an obsessive security bot on one level, or once you've unlocked the elemental powers, he can clear a path through the bleakness. Bomber, like his name suggests, will explode to carve a path through weak walls, or fit through pipes to get around the world and help you out. So by using these spirit powers with Biggs or Bomber, they become much more useful and the game starts to get a little bit more interesting in terms of its gameplay. You can careen yourself through enemies if you hit Biggs with a green power, because that'll make him terrified, and he'll, you can grab onto him and you can just kind of drive him like a great big lumbering machine through all the enemies and through some sort of webbing that you need to get through sometimes. Bomber, uh, you can hit him with fear and he'll rain down powerful tears uh, that can destroy like a whole group of enemies if you're attacked by a large group of them. Or you can hit him with the red power and he'll explode, but you've got to make sure you're out of the radius of it because you'll get destroyed as well. So at, you know, at six hours, The Last Tinker City of Colour isn't the most complex or deep action platformer you're ever going to play. But you know what, that's okay. That's okay. It doesn't set out to be that type of game. This is much more of a gentle romp through a fantastically realised world. The art style and characters make it a special experience, and even though the final few levels are just a bit of a letdown with their formulaic design, The Last Tinker is worth picking up just to drink in its handcrafted visuals and the feel-good vibe you get from the game. Uh, to be honest, when was the last time someone said that about a video game? Please check it out.